What's up, everybody? Welcome to the State of Wild, episode 108, a regular YouTube video web series podcast thingy. My name is Meowthan, as usual. I'm joined by two good friends and co hosts, Raffle and Corbett. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. We had an uh, exciting week in the wild community, I think. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it gives us uh, plenty to, to chat about, which is, you know, a little bit unusual aside from balance changes uh, of late. We're kind of in that, uh, you know, post expansion lull. It's been a about two months almost two months closing in on two months uh, since the expansion was revealed so um you know we're we're almost to the mini set waiting room but uh we got a nice break with the uh the brawlizium that uh that happened this week yeah it's been uh it's been a fun week of hearthstone we're gonna get into it but um yeah i i mean it the the patch has been good right the um the patch, I think, for for standard players in particular, has been very, very nice. And uh, yeah, just in general, it's been it's really been good to have a lot of spotlight on the wild community, and the uh, you know the format with the heroic brawl. A lot of standard streamers kind of trying the mode. Um, it's just been a very you know good vibes all around. I would say for wild uh, the past couple of weeks. Yeah, usually wild players get like four four really nice things a year, maybe five, right? Where you have the three expansions, you have like the reversion announcement. And then you have like the one big balance patch that happens a year that saves the wild format. Those are like the five really good things. And now we got the Brawlzium, so it's like we're being spoiled. And uh, no. I don't know about you guys, but the Brawlzium has been awesome, right? Been a lot of fun uh, watching and playing in it. And uh, hopefully, those of you guys that are out there listening have had a really good time playing and listening to it. Um, and so, let's, I mean, let's just dive right on into it. Let's talk about the the Brawlzium. Uh, let's just talk about like the experiences so far. What, what have you guys been jamming? How's the success has been? Uh, how are you guys enjoying the brawl this week? Um, to be honest with you, I, like I took a little bit of my own advice, and I've been having more fun watching it than like playing it myself. Like I, I played a, a few runs the the first day just because you know I was like, okay, maybe I, maybe I still got it. Maybe I can still uh, <laughs> still got it. <laughs> get, <laughs> you know, I, I have that uh, have that competitive edge, and I, I realized very quickly like about halfway through my first run i'm like oh god this is why i stopped doing this i just i am not enjoying the game right now so i did two more runs and uh <laughs> and uh, you know compounded my misery a little bit um and yeah I, I i am washed up i am not good i i think i i capped out at like nine wins or but like i probably was uh positive in my like return on it but well, very negative about like playing the game in that manner. Um, so I just watched some streams. I, I, you know, there a lot of people had co ops going. I just kind of lurked in those. And watching streams is something that like I hadn't done in terms of Hearthstone content for a while, just because like you know I get enough Hearthstone content in my <laughs> daily life between streaming it um, pretty regularly and then like watching back of those streams and editing my videos. So it's like. You know that's that's enough Hearthstone for me, but like this week I was, I was enjoying watching, you know, the, a, a lot of uh, other wild streamers and uh, even a few standard streamers uh, give a crack at the the Brawl Sam. So, like, yeah, from a from a spectator perspective, it was great. Like, it's good content if you're into you know watching competitive Hearthstone and you don't want to put your own uh, money or gold on the line, which is what again I recommended last week and took my own advice. I had a surplus of gold. Still do, uh, and uh, I've got some packs waiting for me for the for the mini set as well. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been so fun. Um, much like Ruffle, I don't usually like watch too much Hearthstone content. Uh, it kind of, you know, you know, it's very easy to get Hearthstone out right when you're already thinking about it and playing it and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, but I I have also enjoyed, you know, watching uh, a whole bunch of the other streams and stuff. The the co op aspect has been so fun. Um, because, like, I I've done a lot of the Brawl myself, but really, I've pretty much played the Brawl, like, a lot for two days, but then the other days have just been so much co um, and that's just been the, the most fun uh, part of it, even a lot of it offline, <laughs> so, which does kind of suck, because I know a lot of people would enjoy watching that stuff, but it's also just been really fun to hang out with friends and just kind of go along with it as well. Uh, so, yeah, it it it's been great. I, I personally um, have not taken ruffles advice and have just been pissing away gold uh left and right <laughs> so 
Um, the return on investment, though, hasn't been too bad. You know, I don't know what I'm going to be doing with 200 plus packs of this expansion, but I'm sure I'll make use of it somehow. Yeah, I so mean, you, you'll finally craft you're... golden cards, right, Corp? I dusted the golden Edwin so fast. Golden Denathrius, gone. His, uh, it's already happened. But he's so hot! Yeah, he is so hot, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you almost certainly don't have to buy the mini set when it does come out, though, because that's going to be more than enough packs with the um, I... the duplicate protection to ensure that you get every card. So, just wait. Yeah, it's a little uh, it's a little pro tip. Hold your hold your packs, guys, if you have been playing it and collecting collecting all those. I didn't hold my packs. I opened them all so that I could get uh, dust. Uh, well, so that I could uh, get yeah. dust to make the brawl decks that I was playing golden. Because unlike Corb, I'm a whale, and yeah, I I have no self dolphin. control. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm, I'm a dolphin. I'm a mini whale. Mini whale that doesn't have any golden cards. Okay. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I. I've also not taken Raffle's advice. I, I think I've played 12 runs. I've actually had a really good win rate, I think, overall. Like, my if I look at my win rate, it's, like, 70-plus percent. Um, the issue is, is, like, I still haven't gotten that elusive 12-win screenshot. And so it, it makes me look washed compared to all the other wild streamers that are out there that are getting 12 wins. So, you know, Corb out here making Raffle and I look bad, but... I have at least tried for it, and the Rob I, just had that one day, and so... <laughs> I, I feel yeah, like, I, okay, the one thing I hate about the Brawl is just how, like, it's 12 or nothing. Like, yeah. it, it's, mm -hmm. like, really, a 10-win run is very impressive. 11 wins, really, like, one thing goes wrong, and that's the difference between 11 and 12, and it's, like, it's just... I mean, an 11-win run is phenomenal and should be treated as such, but it's, like, not 12, not good enough, don't care. And it, it's just, like, I don't know, the that's... That's why I feel like there's some uh, some bias in some of the decks that, that do come out of it, because like we don't know what's hitting 11 or 10 and pretty consistently, and so um, I'm sure we'll talk about that, but like I, I just hate the um, fixation on only uh, only the perfect run is uh, is acceptable for uh, you know or worthy of reporting on, I guess. Yeah, I actually had a bit of that. Uh, I was guilty of falling to that before where I um. I didn't really want anyone to cope with me until I got my 12. And then, like, once I got my 12, then I could, like, do my... But I just wanted to do it by myself first before I kind of... You know, I didn't want my first one to be a join. I kind of just wanted to, you know, get that perfect run on my own. Um, but, man, that, that took a little bit of time, a little bit of gold <laughs> before it happened. Yeah, I, I think I'm staring at, like, 12 runs that I've done so far. Um, so I had, like, 17,000 gold, by the way, saved up. And so I was like, oh, finally something to use my gold on. Um... And so I have jammed a ton of brawls. Uh, so I did 12 brawls, and I think 8 or 9 of my brawls have gone 8 or 9 wins. But none of them have gotten past 9 wins, which feels... But like I'm consistent, right? So I'm making a ton of stuff back in packs and dust and gold. But it, it does feel a little bit bad not to hit the 12. I mean, but uh, but regardless of the, uh, the results, right, for, for anybody, it feels really damn good to have, like, something worth playing for again, even if it is just you know, 12 wins in the, uh, the heroic brawl. Yeah. We've, uh, we've talked in the past, uh, referring to the wild open about, um, how important it is to get eyeballs on the format. And that's kind of what, uh, an event like this does. So it doesn't have to be a big tournament to, uh, to have a positive impact on the format, right? You had lots of, like you said, standard players, uh, trying out the format. And, uh, again, that gets exposure. People try it out themselves, maybe enjoy it and, uh, stick with it. And like, that's, what is necessary for the wild format to grow so overall a good thing even if uh even if you know a bunch of people aren't throwing their gold and rune stones at it it's still uh it's still good just as again a spectator uh experience i mean do we want to get into like some of the decks that we're seeing and uh all that kind of thing because man i i do feel bad about like some of the stuff that i'm seeing in the first four or five games of the brawl yeah, I mean, we can do it. Let's go talk about some of the uh, the standard decks that we've all lost to. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but, you know, it feels so bad to lose to a standard deck because you beat them 90% of the time, right? <laughs> like, it's when you lose to it that it feels terrible. But, man, some of the jank that I'm seeing, it's unreal. Um, Like, with that kind of entry point, 
Uh, I don't know whether people just, like, aren't reading what the entry cost is, where they, like, it's either standard decks, or it's, like, wild decks that have to be tier 1 billion, like, things that I've never seen before on ladder, card choices that make no sense whatsoever, and people are just, like, paying up a thousand gold for it, and it's, I don't know, it's hey. nuts, I, I, I'm kind of shocked that every game isn't just, like, quest made from the very first match, like, things Unfortunately. Like that. Unfortunately, I think it's probably worse than that. I think it's people spending ten dollars on runestones in order to enter that. Ugh. That uh, it's just like I'm. I'm sure it's probably prevalent, even more so among like uh, mobile games with events like this that uh, like m maybe get overconfident uh, players to um, just I don't know throw money at something expecting uh, the the good returns. Um, or just people not aware of how bad the EV is and just, like, assuming that it's kind of like an arena run where as long as I go uh, four or five wins, at least I'm getting, you know, even value on my uh, on on my gold. So, yeah, I think uh, that's the unfortunate reality. I really do wish it were more clear or just the prize pool in general were better or they just had the regular Brawliseum um, as, mm -hmm. like, a permanent game mode or... Um, or both as a permanent game mode, and it was a very clear distinction that, like, you know, one one is for highly competitive, where you have to do so many of regular Brawliseums before you can even unlock the heroic Brawliseum, so that, like, at least you get a baseline for, this is how well I normally do, maybe it's not worth the 1,000 gold. So uh, that's, again, the unfortunate thing, because I, I saw some really bad jank, too. I saw people, like, just drop and play to Beatles on two with as a priest without using the quest line. Um, that that was just a card in their deck, and you know, it. I don't think it was a Reno deck either. Uh, nor do I think that there was a Nuzoth in there. I saw. I, I like. I really bullied this Burgle Rogue and felt really bad about that. But like, fortunately, I did not lose to a standard deck uh, I don't think but <laughs> so that's the good Sorry, news couldn't, like, couldn't relate. because like couldn't which relate noob to lost to a standard deck <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> couldn't be me exactly exactly which noob yeah. <clears throat> yep yeah it, it feels <laughs> man I, I'm still remembering that I'm having flashbacks to the run where two out of my three losses were to standard decks and it felt really like okay I was I was coping that Oh, standard is just like power crept to all hell if it can be out here and take games off of wild decks. And then I sat there and I was just like, I, I probably just sucked, um, but that's okay. Um, no, it's, I agree though. But it's also not even just like standard decks and things like that. It's like decks from yesteryear that I'm seeing like pop up. Like mm -hmm. even Paladin got like a 12 win run um, and, and things like that. I, I just saw a tweet earlier today, but like the the zero to five bracket i'm seeing like i saw some ignite mage um i saw some non shadow non shadow non renathal reno priest i saw some lpg mage in the brawl as well i think it's just like you said people not realizing either the interfere or whatever and just kind of queuing up like their pet deck and, and jamming games with it I saw, uh, the, the two ones that stood out to me that I still remember, I saw, like, a 2017-18 Gunther Mage, uh, like, straight from Ungoro, and the, the other one that I saw was a, like, Witchwood Standard Odd Rogue, so it had the SI7 Agent, the Blink Fox, the Fungal Mancer, like, card for card, no patches, playing deckhand, um, that was, uh, that was a pretty good one as well. Yeah, I saw some some nerd playing some Evolve Shaman that seemed like it was out of uh, 2018 mm -hmm. as well. You know, <clears throat> How did that I, I heard feeling? that nerd had a. <laughs> I heard that that nerd was playing a Renathal with me. I thought it was a, a very updated, very good deck actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. Yep. Um, but, I mean, let's <laughs> let's transition this comment or this content to uh, the good decks from the brawl, right? Um, and so it feels like the uh, the big winners, right, that we've seen kind of come out of this: uh, Reno Priest, uh, Miracle Rogue. And uh, kind of like a little bit below those uh, are Even Shaman and uh, the Curse Warlock. And I don't think many people are like super surprised by those because those were kind of what people saw as the really good decks on ladder kind of going into the Brawlizium. Um So I guess were, y were y'all's experiences kind of the same? Like those were, do you think that those are like the four best decks uh, like in, in 
I guess, do, do you think that they're like the four best decks? I think they're certainly four of the, the best decks. I think that there's a little bit of uh, confirmation bias associated with this. Those were the decks that got uh, very early 12 wins reported. So that's what a lot of people started queuing up. Um, I personally noticed a lot of homogeny in the decks as you started getting higher in your win rate. Like if it was, if it was a priest, you knew it was going to be the Reno Shadow Priest. If it was a Warlock, you knew it was going to be a um, a Curse Lock. If it was a Shaman, you knew it was going to be even Shaman. If it was any other class, you knew it was going to be a Rogue, and it was going to be that Miracle Rogue. So, um, like, yeah, it, it, things became pretty predictable so it's just kind of like these these four decks battling it out at the at the top ranks but i think that there you know probably would have been a little bit more variety if um if we saw more variety in what was getting reported in the 12 win runs because especially the reno priest like popped off really early people were really high on uh, miracle rogue as well and then they're just kind of like okay well let's play some decks that are either good against those or were already good decks uh to begin with in both the curse lock and the um the even shaman so I think the the only maybe surprise is that like Corb was at, it, not this part isn't a surprise. Corb was absolutely right, and uh, the Miracle Rogue, even with the the Edwin nerf, is still extraordinarily good. And I think that people first of all missed that before Edwin was buffed, and then maybe you know overestimated how impactful the Edwin like re nerf was going to be. And maybe just underestimated how strong that deck was before the Brawl to begin with. Even with the unnerfed Edwin, I didn't see a lot of people playing it. People got good results with the, the Brawliseum. And um, like that turned it into one of the best decks in the format. And um, so, I don't know. There's also... You know, it, you just... You don't want to be queuing up like a borderline tier 2, tier 3 deck into this either. Because you're looking to make a strong run with as high, or with as many wins as possible. You're not looking to like just climb the ladder with something like a big priest, which can maybe win, you know, fifty three to fifty two percent of your your games every now and then. That's probably a little bit high, fifty and a half percent of your games. But if you get a good streak, you know, you're blasting through the the ladder ranks with that win streak bonus, and it feels good. So like a deck like that, probably like I rarely saw in when I because it loses to a lot of those decks it's not very good in that format it's not even the best ladder deck right now but it's extraordinarily popular popular because it's kind of like just that autopilot deck that you can you, you can run up get some wins and climb the ladder while you're you know watching the newest episode of Game of Thrones or something so it's um you know it's it's a little bit different format in what types of decks it favors it really wants um you know, decks that are capable of at least beating those four or five uh, very prevalent decks uh, that uh, people were queuing up. Yeah, the uh, the jankiness of the format um, actually probably does, like, hurt and help, uh, you know, decks to varying degrees, right? Where something like Inner Fire Priest, I think, is, like, a very good ladder deck. The thing is, Inner Fire Priest will just lose to something like standard quest priest <laughs> like I, I know it is funny the idea of like losing to a standard deck but a deck like that is just like packed with eight thousand pieces of removal um or, or even losing to something like you know someone just randomly includes like a devolving missiles in in their deck um in like a reno mage or something and your crab rider gets eaten and you kind of just lose the game so it, it certainly feels like some decks are a weaker to just random removal piles or the messiness of the format, whereas something like Reno Priest um, could be a bit more resilient to that. You know, there's, there's probably like less uh, less games where it feels like um, you just sort of lost to randomness of like whatever the hell your opponent was using. <laughs> and uh, like kind of like the less your win condition can kind of get interfered, the more, you know, resilient the deck is. Uh, the Reno Priest is like very hard to sort of there's, there's a lot more room for, like, outplaying the opponent and, like, hard to get interacted with, right? So that can certainly favor certain decks as well. Um, but I definitely agree with Ruffle about, you know, there is some sort of some biasing going on where, you know, people people play stuff and then it wins early and then everyone kind of copies that. Because ultimately, what goes 12 wins, it's not really just about, like, how good the deck is. It's also about, like, how popular it is, you know? <laughs> like you can only you can only see a twelve win deck if people are playing that deck. And uh I think that's gonna be almost the biggest driving factor. 
is whatever is the most popular will get the most 12 wins. Um, you know, assuming the decks are above a certain minimum power level. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the Brawl's definitely been interesting. It's definitely, like, helped sort of crystallize my thoughts on the meta, because we are just coming off a very recent balance patch. I think Reno Priest definitely benefits a lot from Druid getting weaker. Um, it's been interesting seeing Miracle Rogue continue to perform really well. Um, but this is also kind of a lot of stuff that I've been seeing in just the HS replay stats. Um, you know, things like Pirate Rogue have been looking weaker, uh, particularly Legend. And, um, you know, and, and again, we haven't really seen as many, like, Pirate Rogues pop up compared to some of the other decks. But, yeah, it's been very uh, interesting because the nerf did only just happen very recently. And so this is kind of, like, the, the test case a lot of the time for what we're going to see until the mini-set. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's interesting. I, w- I want to kind of circle back, and then we'll come back to this last comment. Y- you were talking about, like, popular decks that are kind of resilient, right? Like, being a proactive game plan it's been really strange that we haven't seen a ton of like success uh, of quest mage and, and big priest. Right. Cause that kind of feels like they fit that bill, that bill of, I'm just going to enact my game plan a- as fast as possible <clears throat> and, and kind of go from there. Well, I, I, I yeah, I was going to say, I think, um, I think quest mage and big priest are a lot more like draw dependent. It feels like, um, like there's a lot of high variance sort of just built into those decks uh that is less about what the opponent's doing like something like in a fire right can kind of get blown out by what the opponent's doing quest major big priest can get just destroyed by you not drawing well <laughs> and just kind of just flailing around like nothing so i think that's kind of part of it as well um that sort of adds to the rng that's what i have seen like a fair amount of big priest you know i, I, I still have seen that so you know but uh what were you saying ruffle no i was gonna say the same thing that those decks um you know lack the the consistency um in terms of realizing their game plan and like they do kind of lose to themselves uh on a regular enough basis that um i don't think that they would make for very good brawl decks uh they're both reasonably uh weak to some amount of disruption as well like a, a single lotheb or even a shadow step lotheb in that miracle rogue deck can really just completely neutralize a, a a big priest and then same thing if you can rat the birds in, against quest mage or like just uh, lock them out of spells again with the lotheb um and so because miracle rogue uh in particular was very popular very early that that may be a bit of a hindrance to to both of those but also i just like they're they're not the top tier decks that like people make them out to be mm-hmm. that they're just they're, they're really obnoxious in, in the play <laughs> pattern and you know have are like ha- a, maybe a little bit over representative of uh, their sh- like relative strength in terms of their strength in the metagame. And so people overestimate their their power level as a result. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I saw very many. I saw more big priests than quest mages for sure. Um, but even then I didn't like beyond a certain, beyond like four or five wins, I wasn't seeing big priests. Yeah, for me it was I didn't see them uh, until I was playing a deck that like beat I think like three out of the four good decks, and then I was like, but they lose to Quest Mage and Big Priest, and that's when I found the Quest Mage and Big Priest when I was playing those decks. So uh, great, great, not very fun, but uh, <laughs> I mean, kind of last comment here then I guess about the decks, uh, just if we think that it translates I think pretty well to the the meta at least at the top, um, just kind of how were we feeling about the meta. Uh, now that we're a couple weeks out from the balance patch, we've got people playing a ton of games in the Brawlizium. Uh We've had a ton of time on ladder as well. Uh, I know Corby kind of alluded to this earlier. Um, Druid getting a little bit weaker. Miracle Rogue still staying strong. Uh, how are we seeing the meta kind of kind of shake up or, or settle? I guess is the the right word. Two weeks after the uh, the patch. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of have like three default, pretty damn good aggro decks that around we have like even shaman beast hunter and inner fire um beast hunter and inner fire seem like they're not just not going to catch on very much though like people just don't seem to ever really want to play those decks very much um which does make it a little bit tough to judge them because they there could be some biasing there but uh so even shaman is kind of like the default aggro deck it feels like pirate rogue has been pushed down a little bit uh especially with the rise of like priest and things like that um druid going away is probably reno druid was probably like a fine matchup for pirate rogue 
Uh, but yeah, so we have like the three good aggro decks, Miracle Rogue, which is unplayable, so trash if you're at like Diamond, and then it turns into a really good deck at Legend, from from what I've seen. Um, like that's probably the highest skill cap competitive deck in the format right now, it seems like. Uh, so if you want a deck that's very rewarding, guys, um, that's good. Get good at Miracle Rogue. Um, that would be a suggestion. And then, yeah, I, th I think like Reno Priest is the one that's had the most development and the most attention from the brawl. Um, I feel like Reno Priest was one of the more messy archetypes and sort of people still hadn't quite figured it out. And it's definitely, there's been a lot of development, right? Like the, like Harvester has been cut from many people's lists. Uh, we've kind of like tightened things up with the Thief package, things like that. Uh, and that's been really good. And again, like the deck that certainly does benefit as well from the Goth nerf. Um, so that's a big deal as well. But yeah, so three aggro decks, Reno Priest, Miracle Rogue, and then Curse Warlock and Quest Mage and Big Priest and things like that. Pirate Rogue kind of running around a little bit below those. And that's kind of just how, I, how I'm kind of seeing it right now. Yeah, it, uh, a few points that you made there. I think that like Beast Hunter and um, Inner Fire Priest kind of almost suffer from being budget decks. Um, the, because it's like... Every, you know, and it's just a bunch of like common beasts and you know core set spells or like legacy set spells for for priests that we've had for the dawn of, since the dawn of Hearthstone, right? So it's like <laughs> it, it's it's just boring. We've done that before, and like people don't don't come back to it. But in reality, those are two of the most engaging decks that you could possibly want to play alongside Miracle Rogue. Like I think that Beast Hunter, it, it isn't like you know the, this five head deck but it's like super engaging timing out your buzzard plays choosing the right things off a of harpoon gun certain interactions with um some of the minions with one another um i i think it's one of the most fun decks to play and i, I like it it's kind of annoying to me that it doesn't catch up <laughs> like why aren't why are more people playing this this is fun it's inexpensive you need like two legendaries just play the deck you get to send Tundra Rhinos and like Tundra Rhino and Hydra Ladon or th th that interaction is like one of my favorite things in all of Hearthstone, especially when you can do it to a big priest like through their um, blood of Gahoons and just send infinite damage at their face. It's beautiful. So just do that. Do that, people. It's a good deck too. Um, you know, in terms of uh, the Reno Shadow Priest, I don't think Harvester ever belonged in that deck. Like that that card was just like I. I ran it obviously because I was like I, it, it was a meme. Like I thought everybody was, it was just in agreement that that was a that was a meme card. It, it almost never stole anything, and you know you're just playing a three mana four three when you could be playing a good card. So like yeah, that that card was never going to be long for that deck in my opinion. Uh, but people kept running it. Um, but yeah, I think that we did get some refinement, and even before the refinement for uh, Reno Priest, it was still far and away the best priest deck it was still a very good deck right like it um it relied on the hero power and the yellow cards and you know if, if you have 40 cards and some of them are yellow and you know the the other ones kind of matter less as long as they generate more cards for you to you know get to your yellow cards or they could generate yellow cards from your opponent's deck too so it's like you know it's it's it was a good deck that's it kind of almost as similar as you can get to like a Baku or Gen type deck when it's just got that upgraded hero power early and then it just has a pile of cards that generate other cards and so it's just like as long as you have cards you you have cards that you can play and then you win and like, like that that's really what matters in, in piloting the deck like even the Anduin doesn't feel like it closes out many games it's just like the opponent kind of leaves or you just have so many cards that they can't card with you anymore and they just stop carding yeah it's uh drax's priest actually because i find myself getting drax's off of my zef with that deck way more than i probably should be uh especially in the mirror uh because like if you don't have your anduin on curve it's something just like slam a drax's and make six sixes for days with uh that raza hero power as well drax's is better than anduin math in the mirror i think God. i think if you like you you override it a lot of the time if you have it that card just carries yeah yeah, it's it's actually kind of insane, right? Like we're back, we've circled all the way back around. Where we're running Jaraxxus in our decks, and it's God, what year is it? Um, I I will say, I, I think Corby kind of touched on this as well earlier. I think my favorite part about this whole thing is that like the refinement that we're seeing to decks because of this, 
right? Like, even at the very top, right? We're talking about these best decks. Because of the Brawlizium and, and having way more people touching the format, we've seen people... We, we've seen refinement of Shadow Priest, right? I still remember the days where, like, I was sent a list by NHL, by Marty, and it was like, okay, this is a list that came out of the Chinese server. I've been playing it. It seems good. And I took a look at the list, and I was like, what the hell are these cards that are in the deck? Like, why is there a Camellios? Why is there a Harvester? Why is there a Soul Mirror and no Psychic Scream? Like, it, it, was, it was a bunch of bad cards. And now we're, like, getting to the point where I'm like, it, this looks like a respectable deck, and it's performing really, really well. But even stuff like Even Shaman, right? Like, Even Shaman has, like, 14 good cards and then, like, 16 mediocre cards. And so we've seen people... Uh, so I think, like, Maxi is an example of somebody, right? We're, we're running Frostbites. I think that's, like, been a recent thing before the Brawl, but it's, like, more widespread now. Um, as well as, like, Cult Neophytes being run. So, like, we're seeing some refinement for Even Shaman. And then... I know we've been stands of the Wild Seeds on this podcast, but like Martian got a 12 0 win with no Wild Seed Beast Hunter and no Hyena Beast Hunter as well. So it's been cool to kind of see all the innovations and refinement of deck lists, I feel like, uh, over the course of the past week. And yeah, the the decks in general, um, like in terms of the, the the meta breakdown, is kind of what I'm thinking about. The uh, I think like the the overwhelming difference between what most people will see on ladder and what like high legend will be is this miracle rogue. Like I feel like everything circles back to miracle rogue right now, and it's kind of what makes Reno Priest better is because that matchup is so good for the priest. Like it's like the one horrific matchup for miracle rogue, and the miracle rogues. Uh, sorry, and the Reno Priest have slowly, you know, as that deck has been refined, like we we're talking about, cutting a lot of the the value generation and just adding more and more removal you know now we're seeing things like shadow of death and uh like ruin is like now just a core inclusion people are running scream and uh uh soul mirror at the same time um everything just kind of circles back to that and kind of how miracle rogue is great but it loses the priest and then priest gets better at high legend and the priest is just like kind of good against everything um so i think that's going to be the difference between high legend and the rest of the format whereas the rest of the format will again be more dictated by big priest and you know like uh, probably a lot more pirate rogue as well i think pirate rogue is another deck that will continue to be very popular but will probably fall off a little bit at higher ranks um there's always a pirate deck now that always you know is popular at lower ranks and falls off at high ranks it, it always starts off so strong and it just takes an expansion for it to to happen so does that is miracle rogue the uh the new dark layer then like i I think that's a really good comparison. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been thinking about uh, in terms of like skill cap, in terms of popularity, high ranks. Um, I, I think uh, I think it is. You know, it, like the play pattern is is kind of similar. You know, make those fatties spam that low fab. Um, it does feel like dark layer two point oh. No. Yep. All right. Uh, damn. I just want to go gym some miracle rig now, but uh, I do want to kind of pivot back here. Let's wrap up on the brawlzium. Um, and I kind of just wanted to talk to you guys about, like, what are your, your kind of wants, right? Like, what have you learned about, like, from the Brawl and kind of what do you kind of want moving forward? And I, I, I pose this question in a very, really vague way because uh, when I was co-oping with Corb, um, and I, I don't know if this was when we were co-oping with Rawful or this is when we were co-oping with Otters, but you were talking about how you really, really like the co-ops because Hearthstone really just is missing kind of that social aspect um, that you normally get with card games and like co-oping kind of really, I don't know, not really solves it, but it's like, it's currently like the only social option really available for, for Hearthstone, right? Um, and so kind of like, I want to do more of those. Like that's kind of my big takeaway from the Brawl is EM. It's like competitive wild, awesome, co-ops, like, multiplayer hearthstone you know also awesome yeah uh i think just collaborative content is probably something that is highly underutilized in the hearthstone community um compared to what you see from like other other games and like other particularly like other big twitch streamers right like hearthstone is often very singularly focused we haven't really seen a ton of it pop off since um i guess like firebat and crew used to uh do a lot of cult content but you know, you see a lot less of it now. So, yeah, it definitely, like, reinforces that. And the the big thing about the Brawl, right, is it just gives so much 
reason to you know it's an event it's like a a, a big thing where it's this awesome party and you want to make sure you go and you know you have some people to hang out with while you're while you're there um i think a lot of viewers the feedback that i've gotten from viewers from the co-op streams has been like amazing it seems like a lot of people have really really liked it um and just kind of like just putting out more events like this that uh you know get people excited uh is definitely you know something that i'd hope to see moving forward i, I don't really see why like the heroic brawlzeum is is one thing um but i i don't really see why we couldn't you know just want an expansion get get a like a wild uh normal brawlzeum or something um you know there's, there's a lot of weeks that we get a tavern brawl i feel like donating like one of them um would be all right or like ruffle was even talking about you know making it a permanent mode as well that's definitely uh food for thought we have the modes like menu now like what? yeah it's not like there's there's no reason not to just make it a permanent make both of them a permanent fixture like yeah i, I like the fact that it's events because it draws eyes in but what i would like out of this is a, what i talked about earlier have both of them be permanent you have to do a certain number of uh regular brawliseums before you can actually qualify to do the heroic so that you're not just like throwing money away um which isn't really going to stop people anyway. Um, but, like, it, it at least creates some barrier uh, of entry. And just, like, put it in the modes. Put it for standard two, standard wild Brawliseum, just as a permanent fixture. Then you don't feel rushed to, um, you know, complete the run in, like, a single week of time as well. You get refunded, like, an arena run if you're midway through. And... Um, yeah, I, I, I don't see any reason not to because, like, it is something that a portion of people want to partake in until we have, like, a legitimate tournament mode. This is, like, a decent stopgap for that, and I've always considered that, like, to be the case. So the, uh, the infrastructure is there. The technology is there. I don't see a reason not to do it, to be honest. Um, the other thing that I want is since, like, events are so popular, and this is the events that we have right now, I, I just want wild events so i don't care how you do it just incentivize players to play wild for a while and they will play wild for a while and that's a good thing and uh you know as a wild content creator maybe that's a little bit selfish but like why not like let people give people a reason to try and maybe they'll like it maybe they'll play the game more maybe they'll um you know find a new you know preference for their their game mode so just yeah just get eyeballs on it yeah, it's definitely selfish because we're all three content creators. I think we all three want that. But I also think it's what we've talked about before, right? Just in general of like, well, how do you get people to play wild? It's to hold events like this, get people to take a look at the format. And then if they like it, right, even if you introduce like a thousand new people and only like a hundred of them really like the format and continue playing that, that's still a hundred new people that are playing the format, right? Um, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with uh, with both of you guys. Um I don't know. I this this has been a really good week. I think for uh, for Wild Hearthstone, and, and I think the past couple of weeks, and, and hopefully the next couple of weeks moving forward, uh, are pretty good. I, I think just like meta's in a really great spot. The Brawlzium, I'm feeling wholesome about Wild, man. It's it's been good. I, I was going to say good. I, what a good time <laughs> for the brawl. You know, like this yeah. <laughs> this landed so perfectly. Out of all the metas that we could have had, it's like damn, this uh, this worked out pretty great. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Uh, all right, so. Brawl of CM aside, we did have uh, a couple other noteworthy news things that uh, we want to just touch on here at the end of the episode. Um, so the first one, Ixar uh, is leaving Blizzard. Uh, so not just leaving the Hearthstone team, like a couple of other Hearthstone designers have done in the past couple of years to move to another team within Blizzard. Uh, Ixar is gone. Ixar is no longer working uh, on Hearthstone after our 11 and a half years or something like that. Uh so it's i mean it's big news i know we don't normally cover things like this but given that ixar went out of his way as a senior dev to, to come be on the podcast like I, I think it's time we take a, a little bit of a moment of appreciation for everything that he's done for the format and for hearthstone and uh, and things like that yeah i mean personally like friend of the show ixar uh no longer working with blizzard <laughs> is a it, uh is it, sad to say like you know, I, I personally liked him. I think he did a lot of uh, good things for Hearthstone. I think that he communicated very clearly and articulately about what, what their plans for the game mode are within, like, the confines of his position at the job and what he was able to, to reveal. Um, I know that inevitably, like, 
within the gaming community. There are people that don't like him. I I think that that's that's fine. People didn't like other game directors that were very popular, and then until after they left, uh, including Broad, like he wasn't well liked when he was doing the job. So it's like uh, people tend to look back on uh, somebody with more fondness than when they are in the position, and um, y you know it's it's hard to not to like overreact a little bit in either direction because you know he was a prominent figure within the Hearthstone community within the Hearthstone development team since its inception and he's like one of the last remaining people that the, that was the case for so like I, I understand people that like appreciate the work that he did like we do growing concerned um I'll certainly miss him and miss his uh, AMAs and that kind of thing but one thing that I did learn from you know my time in corporate America is that like in either direction uh people tend to overestimate the impact that a single individual can have and does have uh on like the way that a company is run so like you know if you hate the state of hearthstone right now you're probably like screaming at the cloud xr or if you uh, are happy about it you're probably giving maybe a little bit too much praise to, to xr uh, as well because it's not just a single person, you know, pulling levers and flipping buttons. It's like, it's a whole team. There's a processes involved and those processes remain. People will step up to cover the, the things that XR was doing. And like, again, back to my experience in corporate America is that like everybody overestimates how losing a single individual will like affect the company. They like, there's this constant panic even within the company of, Oh my God, how are we going to survive? And then you realize, Oh, well that person stepped up a little bit and now like, okay. And, you know, we have all this documentation and all these processes in place, like, a, a few months, you're, like, not even noticing their absence quite uh, all that much. You're just, like, doing your job and putting things out as normal. So I think it's, like, the, the impact on in terms of what we'll see uh, is probably overstated. Like, internally, it might be a little bit difficult for a while because they're once again without a game director, which, you know, I, I don't know how hands-on or, like, how impactful that is uh, on a team, but, like, most of this team has been without a game director for, <laughs> for periods of time as well because there have been like gaps in in between uh hiring for that position so i don't know that like i don't know that things will change i mean again at the at the company i worked for we had turnover constantly at some of the the higher um positions and we literally didn't notice so it's like <laughs> uh like I, I don't know you 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 get by you you do your job everybody continues doing their job some people do more um or you just backfill for that position and like i don't know life goes on uh unfortunately i'll still personally miss xr because i think he was i think he was great for the game and i think he was just like i don't know i enjoyed his uh his uh amas and discussions about hearthstone in, in general so personally i'm bummed yeah, same. Uh, Ixa, I think, was a great face um, for the game. Uh, it was very hard for like anyone to sort of feel the feel the role that sort of Broad filled in the very early days, who's uh, obviously a very charismatic uh, person and was fantastic in that public-facing role. But uh, I think Ixa, in his own way, did an incredible job in sort of uh, you know uh, becoming that face of of the team. Um, you know, he was able to take over as Hearthstone sort of. Um, left its sort of infancy stages um his first you know design uh, expansion that he kind of took the lead on was in i think kft and then knc and then witchwood uh which is sort of the beginning of where the game kind of started rapidly changing um and in my opinion like for the better you know and that's where eventually we saw things like battlegrounds and expansion of the modes and all that kind of thing um and so yeah like as to what ixar's <laughs> like actual impact on him leaving the role is uh we don't know because we're not on the team like we don't work with him like that's something that the individuals who actually work uh at team five they're the ones who know um exactly in terms of how much impact the work related stuff will have but it seems like he's going to be leaving um a lot of people better off uh than than when they started he'll be leaving you know with a, a lot of fondness uh, i've seen a lot of the posts and all that kind of thing on twitter uh he got a lot of love as he deserves uh it seems like <laughs> so you know it's very sad uh he was kind enough to obviously come to the show when he absolutely did not have to and we're very appreciative of that and you know i just hope that whatever he moves on to um he's able to find uh, a lot of success in that role as well 
Uh, but yeah, something I remember as well is that, you know, in a public facing role like this, the, the departure of someone does get a lot of attention. But like Roth was kind of alluding to, that kind of departure and turnover isn't something that is quote unquote cause for panic. Like this is pretty normal. It's just, this is just a very public uh, I, job change. So right, I would say what's not normal is somebody staying <laughs> eleven for eleven years. years. At, yeah, at a, exactly. At a company. Yeah. So, um, yeah. There's still very talented people that are within the Arston design team, and like even when he was uh, on the show, he was very adamant about the fact that he personally wasn't really even designing cards anymore he was more uh, doing things from a management perspective and he you know that was a common refrain from him so like um yeah like i think uh, again i'll personally miss him and i think that like the the community at whole uh, at large probably will miss him um but i don't think that like i don't think that hearthstone will be like a rudderless ship for and with him gone i think that like you, you know they're they're very capable people that will um you know pick up some of the slack that uh, is left with his departure yeah but uh ixar if you're if you're for some reason listening to this know that we appreciate you the wall community appreciate you especially and uh man hearthstone's gonna be at be without it. it's like hearthstone dad right you were talking about like he got it out of his infancy he was literally hearthstone dad right on twitter <laughs> and so I guess my real question is, who's going to step up and be Hearthstone's next daddy? Like, that's the real question, right? It's Denathrius. <laughs> it's daddy. It's already daddy. happened. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean. Gosh. All right. Um, one last piece piece of news to talk about, though. Um, we have been getting some, uh, some very mysterious, uh, and I use that word on purpose, uh, kind of clues and tweets, uh, cryptic messages on social media uh, from the Play Hearthstone account. Uh, talking about how Denathrius isn't really dead. Um, <sighs> spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, sorry. <laughs> but um, it, basically we get the these kind of tweets and stuff when there's a, a new event uh, or patch, content patch coming out, a.k.a. potentially a, uh, a mini set coming uh, in, in, this, in the near future, um, maybe in a two or three weeks, uh, end of September, early uh october uh potentially for the uh the mini set so uh which feels feels about appropriate right kind of in the the old content cycle of about two months after the patch i know the last time we got it after like six weeks which was a little bit weird um but it seems a little bit more normal we're closing in on about two months uh like raffle said so it seems about damn time uh for a mini set and some uh, some brand new cards yeah they've uh had some cryptic teasers and usually the like you know the social media team has ramped up a little bit in terms of uh what they've been tweeting just in general lately but like they're they've been rapid fire like tweeting things that are kind of they're like light <laughs> teasers um that, that are they're not quite uh you know showcasing anything new or alluding to anything new other than maybe denathrius is still alive and so that that kind of narrative um teasing is usually done around the time of an expansion or or a uh a mini set so i think it's probably reasonable to like start checking your calendars maybe uh you, you know every um you know middle of every week start looking at uh the you know the the hearthstone website or, or twitter or whatever your uh, source of news is to see if there's uh been any announcement because we're we're about at that time maybe a little bit early still um but like last time last expansion around this cycle we had like the the delay for mercenaries i think that they're not going to be on the same schedule as uh last year uh for at least this expansion um so yeah i think that you know beginning half of october is probably reasonable to expect or close to about that time maybe middle of october as well uh at the latest but i don't know last i, I looked it up and last time we got the the mini set like beginning of november so like the, it's not nothing is guaranteed until we get an announcement just prepare yourself for an announcement rather than uh but don't expect the mini set to be out like next week <laughs> or anything like that Ah. Uh... 
I guess not, but I, I think it might be a little sooner than you're, uh, than we might be anticipating. Um, I don't know, because I was going to say, like, you don't expect it, but I'm like, well, by next week I might expect uh, an announcement or, like, something very, very soon. So, uh, it's kind of weird because we are, like, off the old, uh, schedule because everything kind of got screwed up last year with the whole Mercs thing. Um, and there might be reason to... The third expansion might have a lot going on in terms of the announcement and the very specific timing of when they have to drop that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we got the mini set slightly earlier um, than normal. So we'll have to wait and see. But it's kind of snuck up on me just because of the whole Brawl Zayim stuff. I feel like right now I'd usually just be fiending and waiting for new cards and kind of like just rattling around and going nuts. But the Brawl Zayim has been so fun <laughs> that it's kind of just distracted me until then. So yeah, but I'd expect it sooner rather than later. Yeah, I'm I'm a, a little bit nervous. I'm not gonna lie, because the meta is like in a pretty good spot. Right? I don't want anything coming and messing things up potentially. But uh, but also new cards is good. You know, that's so. never happened before. Meowth. Yeah. Uh, so, plus, they're gonna put all the they're gonna put all the busted cards in Paladin, right? Like they have to save Paladin. What's Paladin gonna do? That can't break wild. It's fine. No, mini uh, sets have never been a problem historically. No, never, not even mm. once. No. Nope. To God, and both Paladin flashbacks as well. When you just said Paladin, um, so I also want to just say, like, every time we have a heroic brawl as the it's so that you know, tinfoil hat people yeah. spend all their gold so that they don't have any <laughs> gold for the mini set, and so they have to Look, buy it with cash. So, Ruffle, Ruffle won't say it, I'll say it. I think 27th or 29th wouldn't shock me. Oh, I think it might be that soon of like launch date of the mini set. Okay. I think that setting people's expectations for that is a All bad right. idea. It, it Sorry, just, I didn't in, mean to. In general, in it's general, I, 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 I try to intentionally be extraordinarily <laughs> pessimistic so that people just like look, you know, way, way further down the line. And you're just like, you, you're just shooting that completely out of the sky. We'll look, see. I'll be the, I, I'd I'll be, be happy to be, I, I'd be, I'd be, I'd right love now. to be wrong. I'd love to be wrong because, you know, I love new cards. And right. I have a vacation plan coming. So like, <laughs> I need it not to land on a very specific set of dates. <laughs> All right. Corb, Corb is good cop. Raffle is bad cop. Um, I don't know what that makes me. But basically, what we're saying is just tune into the State of Wild every week. And we'll let you know when the pod, or on the podcast when the, uh, the mini set's coming out. So. Raffle's talking about news sources. We're your news source. We got you. Don't worry. And we'll talk about all the new cards that come out uh, as well. Uh, um, that being said, I don't know. Like I said, I've had a good week. Uh, it's been a blast talking to you guys about the Brawl Zium and all the news and things like that. Uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with me all the way to the end, um, week after week, and uh, to all the viewers that uh, do the same for some unknown reason. So I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out. Let the people know where they can find you guys and your content. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitch and YouTube at Raffle and Twitter and Instagram at RaffleHS. And you can find me at Corbett on Twitch or Corbett Games on YouTube and Twitter. All right, you guys can find me at Get Me Out on all those platforms as well. Appreciate you guys again that listen all the way to the end, and we will see you guys again next time. Later. <laughs>